Hi, this is Miss Litton, and this is my wonderful, wonderful period one AP bio class. Say hi. Hi. Okay, so we're going to go over, and I know we've had an introduction, and you've had your lab prep should be in front of you, but we're going to go ahead and discuss the diffusion and osmosis lab um, that we're going to do today. I'm going to come back to the lab map in just a minute. Um, this lab, diffusion osmosis, the driving question is what causes my plants to wilt if I forget to water them? Blue, tell Slate, what do you know so far about the way membranes work and the way a plant and its central vacuole, how are you predicting the answer to that question? What would you say? Go ahead, Blue, tell Slate. <laughs> Okay, now, I want you to sit on that explanation because we're going to revisit that explanation when we're done with the lab, okay? And part of our um, job in this class is to do the science and engineering practices that are right here. So the first one says asking questions. Do, are we asking a question about this lab? Oh, yes. yes. Are we developing and using models? Yes. yes. Instead of having a real cell in this example, we're going to model cells for the first part by using dialysis tubing. But in the next part, you're going to be using potatoes. So are those real cells? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, are you planning and carrying out an investigation? Yes. yes. Are you going to analyze and interpret that data? Yes. Do you think you'll have to use math to do that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, are you going to construct an explanation for why you get the results you get? Yes. Are you going to engage in argument from evidence? Yes. That's claim evidence reason, right? Did you see what I posted on Instagram yesterday? as examples. The reason why I did that is because on some of your exams, and we will have a time for you to look over your exam, I usually do it during seventh period support, but if we have time next class, I'll even have you look at it next class if you want to. Some of you, when I asked you to make a claim, um, you actually wrote me a hypothesis, or vice versa. You messed up your, your, you kind of switched your claims with your hypotheses, some of you. So that's why I, I posted that. and. I'll, I'll, get, I'll go over it with you again. Um, so that's engaging argument from evidence, obtaining, evaluating, and communicating that information. That's what you're doing in your lab report. Okay, so you're gonna do all of the science practices in this lab. Um, the first part that we're gonna do, and I'm gonna model for you, is we're going to take and work with dialysis tubing, and dialysis tubing looks like this when it is dry, and we're going to take some wet dialysis tubing and we're going to set up kind of like a model cell. And inside of it, we're going to have starch and glucose, and then outside we're going to have water and iodine. And we're going to look to see how substances move across and what evidence we have for substances moving across. And I'm going to model that for you in just a minute. Um, then the next part of your pre-lab is you're going to be taking dialysis tubing and you're going to get it wet and you're going to need to soak it um, so that you can use it for your lab. Um, and you're going to be putting, I changed this, it was in your pre-lab and so it's okay. I know the CDs, you might have trouble with this, but just change the three into a five. Just write hard, it'll be fine. Okay, and um, you're going to be at five mils of solution in your dialysis tubing, and then you're going to be putting it in the water. And we'll talk about what solutions are assigned to you. I know some of you already saw that when you looked at the um, uh, group shared um, or course shared document, what solutions are assigned to you. So that's another part of your pre lab. Okay, and um, what I want to do now is I'm going to pause this recording and I'm going to have you pick up your buckets. And your buckets have, in case somebody's absent, okay? So let me show you what's in your bucket of fun today, okay? Are you supposed to have knives on campus? No, no this is a plastic knife. Do not stab the other children, okay? <laughs> that would be your safety. Don't hurt yourself. It should be fine, okay? You have a knife, and the reason for the knife is to cut off the peels on the edges of your potato later. 
Okay, I got these potatoes last night. Some of them are a little dusty. I would wash them. So if you wanna do that while you're setting up, you can wash it and set it on a paper towel so it's not so dirty and clean out my tray that I made. The other thing you're gonna see in here are three pieces of dialysis tubing. And it looks very much like crispy, but it will become um, more flexible um, once it's soaked. So that's why I'm gonna have you pause and you're gonna take these three and you're gonna get a clean beaker and you're gonna put them in there with some water and just leave them at your station. Um, what else you have in here? You have the, uh, this Petri dish. And the point of this Petri dish is when you're coring your potatoes, you don't, and you're trying, we're trying to figure out the water potential of them. We don't want the potato cores to dry out. So you're gonna put them inside this uh, Petri dish, okay, so they don't dry out. And then this is your potato core that you are gonna poke through your potatoes in order to get your core. And I want you to do them, like lay the potato flat and come at it this way. I don't want you to do it tall ways. Okay. And um, to get the potato out of the core, use your stirring rod and you have a stirring rod up in your box and then you can use that to poke through the potato core to get it out. And we're gonna make sure, we wanna keep all the potato cores about the same size. Why is that? Consistency, right? A constant in our experiment. So try to keep them about the height of the width of the potato just coming straight through but you're not going to do that part but i wanted you to know what's in your um what's in your um, box so you're going to pick up your box soak your three tubes you can wash your potato and then very quickly return back to your seat okay go okay so now your tubing is soaking and you are each assigned a different molarity you have three molarities of solutions and then we're going to compile all of that data together okay then um let's take a look just talking about the potato for the that portion of the lab we are trying to ascertain the, the water potential of a potato so just kind of leading up to that let's look at these observations in, re in review so remember the best possible water potential you could have, like the highest maximum water potential is what? Zero. zero. So pure distilled water is gonna have zero. Anything you put into it, it's gonna go what? Negative. Negative. Okay, so in this beaker we have pure distilled water, and if you look, here's the equation that you know and love. Okay, so water potential is a factor of two things. Pressure potential, who puts the pressure on it? It could be a cell. Well, it could be the environment if you added some pressure on this system, but this is an open beaker, so the pressure potential will be what? Zero, okay? And then the solute potential, how many osmotically active substances you have in there, and that is also zero, so overall your water potential is zero. Here on the potato, um, could I have slate? Why is it negative three on this potato? Why would you predict it as negative three initially? Go ahead. Okay, so come back to me. So when you initially put this chunk of potato in a solution, it's not going to have any effect of the wall on it if you just cut the potato up and you throw it in there. So it's its pressure potential is going to be zero. But it's gonna be on the solute potential, it's negative three because there are items inside each of those cells, right? Sugars, carbohydrates, other dissolved solutions, and amino acids are all gonna be inside of that cell. So anytime you add anything to pure distilled water, it's gonna go what? Negative, okay? So the solute potential here is negative, so when you add those together, it's negative three. So you know water is always going to flow from a higher water potential to a lower. So the highest water potential is out here in the solution, and the lower water potential is inside. Now, will any water flow back out? Yes. But overall, your net change, water is going to be flowing into that potato. Are we all right? Check with your bio buddy, see if they're all right. Okay, we're not working on our lab right now. It's set aside and our attention's up here. Okay, so at the end of this, at the end, after it's sat, the water hasn't changed at all. Nothing's moved into it. Its water potential is still zero, but now if the water potential of the potato is considered zero because so much water has flowed in, the wall is pushing back to a positive pressure of what? 
plus 3, right? So overall it's 0. So now we're not going to have any net change. Does that mean there aren't any osmotically active substances in there? No, they're still there. It's just the wall is pushing back, okay? So what we are going to do in our lab, okay, is, oh, before I talk about the lab, um, not it. Not okay, it. whoever's not, not it. it, pass or play, explain what is going on in this particular example. Go ahead. Okay, so let me ask you, this is water out here, why isn't the water potential, because it's water, why isn't it zero? Yeah, there's solutes that are dissolved into it, so it's minus 12. This potato, this is a different piece of potato. Maybe this is a potato that has sat outside and dried out for a while, and so it's become even more negative as it loses water. Do you agree with that? Okay, so this is another reason to show you. When you, when you punch out your potatoes, if you just let them sit outside in the air, they are going to become drier and drier. They're going to lose more and more water. As they lose water, their water potential is going to go down even farther. So you're not going to be measuring the true water potential of that potato because as soon as you break it and release, bring it out of that potato, it's now going to go to, because this air, what do you think? This air is higher or lower water potential? Lower water potential than the potato. So water's gonna move from the potato out into the air, right? Okay, so now this chunk of potato here is minus 15, water keeps going in till the wall pushes back at a plus three. So overall it's negative 12 and the water potential here is negative 12. Okay, ask your bio buddy, you good on this? Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, make your potato cores, you're gonna punch through your potato, and because I have another class following you, keep your punches to one side of the potato. Okay, don't punch on both sides, okay? You're gonna make some punches, um, you're gonna have three cylinders and you're gonna weigh them together. And you'll weigh them in the dish. Another thing you can do, I can give you baggies because you're only gonna weigh three at a time, right? You're gonna, so you can weigh them in a dish or I can give you, you can put them, um, on a moist paper towel so they don't dry out when you're weighing them. We, there's lots of ways we can do that, okay? Then after you've cored those potatoes, you're gonna put them in various molarities for the same amount of time. And so I have, here are the same ones you're gonna be using in your dialysis tubing. I have set up these dilutions of various molarities from zero to one molar sucrose solutions. And you're gonna be putting potatoes into those solutions. You're gonna be getting averages of because you would predict in a zero molarity solution, do you think your potato is gonna gain or lose weight over a 24 hour period? In a zero molarity, this is, what is that if it's zero molarity? Water. Distilled water. So do you think your potato is gonna gain or lose weight? Gain. gain. So it's gonna gain weight here at the zero. Yeah. I'm sorry, are they putting three cylinders in every yes. solution? Yes, three cylinders in every solution. Three cylinders in every solution. Okay, so here you say it's gonna gain weight, right? And then over here, this right here, a one molar, what do you think it's going to do? Lose weight, because this is probably more concentrated, more osmotically active substances, do you agree? Yeah. So as far as how this goes, it's if we, if we were plotting these on a graph, gain weight, gain weight, gain weight, at some point it's gonna start to lose weight, right? And you're gonna have a line. Okay, see if you can imagine this in your head. Do you see the line going like this? Right here is zero, yeah? Somewhere around the middle? Okay, so if you plot this line, okay, so if we take this, okay, and we plot this line, somewhere right here is going to be zero. Here we think it's going to gain weight, here we think it's going to lose weight as far as how we look at the molarities. If this is zero molar and right here we have one molar, at the point where it doesn't gain or lose weight, okay, that is the molarity we are trying to identify. Because if we have that molarity, the pressure will be zero. It's not gaining or losing, right? Okay. 
And so when we look at the water potential equation, we have pressure potential and solute potential. At this point where it doesn't gain or lose, we're taking pressure out. So if we can calculate the solute potential, we can calculate the water potential of the potato. So I'm gonna tell you right now, having done this lab many times, there's not just one of these molarities where it doesn't gain. That's why you have to plot it on a graph and see where it crosses zero. Okay? So when you do that, okay, so I couldn't find any potato cores, so those are actually, that's from McDonald's, their website, I got some french fries, <laughs> okay? So you're gonna put the potatoes in there. Now, this is what I want you to do before you put them in there. I want, I want you to rinse your potatoes and pat them dry and mass them. Then you're gonna put them in that solution and you're gonna let them sit in that solution for 24 hours approximately. You're gonna pull them out and I want you to rinse them pat them dry and then weigh them again. Now here's the important part of rinsing. Which one of these molarity solutions do you think is the thickest, almost like syrup? Oh one molar. And if you don't rinse that off, it's gonna affect your measurements. And the potato will weigh more than it actually should just because all that sugar is gonna be cleaning, clinging to it like syrup on a um, pancake. So you're gonna rinse it off, okay, pat it dry, and then put it on there. Try to be as consistent as you can. I mean, there, that's room for error right there. Just how much we pat them dry, right? Isn't there, there's room there, okay? And then um, this is the diagram I gave you of, um, of mine. So you have three potato cores times six and you're putting them in your different molarities. Again, you only have three molarities assigned to you. The same three molarities that you're gonna do your pre-lab with you're gonna use those same three molarities to do your potato with, okay? That, so that way we don't, and then we'll average the data amongst all the, amongst all the classes. Okay, so you'll do here, you'll write whatever your team's molarity is in this particular data table, you will write that. You will do your initial mass, your final mass, and your percent change in mass. And then you're gonna be recording that in our course share document just like you're gonna be recording for your pre-lab what happens in those dialysis tubings. And then you're gonna plot the average that we get from all the different, um, er, literally all the AP classes and what data they got. Now, we're gonna be looking at the data because everybody will have their data in by tomorrow. Do you hear me on that? So by Thursday, first period, you'll be able to make you know, it's really third period, I'm gonna to have to make sure they do it. So you have all the data by first period on, let's say Tuesday, Thursday, right? Um, if we have outlier data, like we look at that data and we're like, that's just totally bad, that group totally screwed up, then we're gonna take their data out and we're gonna say outlier. Every group in all my AP classes will know that your data is considered outlier, okay? That's part of being a scientist is communicating your work and publishing it. So we're gonna have to determine whether or not, you know, it is statistically significant out of, it's like doesn't even fit with the rest of our data. It's so different, okay? So if that happens, just be aware, and I'm just warning you now, do a good job, okay? Because everybody is gonna look at your data from the different courses. And we're gonna use that to plot um, on our graph so you'll, you'll do 0 0.2, and you'll do better than I'm doing right now, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and one molar. And you are gonna do percent increase in mass, here's percent decrease, here's zero. So you're gonna have some line that goes across here, okay? Some line that goes across here. And in fact, I think I have here, it might be a way to set it up. You can see where I put the percentages and then you'll plot maybe at zero it was here, maybe at point two it was here, I don't know. Okay, so maybe at point four it started to lose weight. And you do something like this. Maybe it doesn't change. Now we can make our best made line through here. Let's see. No, what it is.
is, right? I don't know. Oh, there you go, ruler. Huh. Okay. So then you make your best made line through here, which that may not be the best made line. Okay, you're gonna make your best made line, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna look to see where did it cross zero? Okay, what molarity? Once you have this molarity, this is going to fit, okay, into this equation right here. So this right here, negative ICRT, which is one of your equations on your um, um, equations list, you're gonna be plotting in here. The one is the ionization constant. Since we're using sugar, it doesn't ionize, so that's gonna be one. If instead we were doing this in salt, it would ionize into sodium and chloride, so the ionization constant would be what? Two, okay? So it's one. Then from your graph, let's say you got 0.38 moles per liter. This is a constant, liters per bar per moles per Kelvin. This right here, this is gonna become important. You need to know the temperature of the solution that you have the potatoes in. So you're all gonna to need to take the temperature today of the solution when you put the potatoes in there, okay? And then all you'll do is you'll calculate this out. This will give you your solute potential. Since your pressure potential is zero, then your water potential will equal your solute potential. And you will know the water potential of the potato, okay? Boom. So it might look your graph might look something like this with your um, calculations right underneath your graph after you've drawn it. You know you've had this presentation the whole time, right? Yeah. Okay, good, just checking. So you could do your calculations right underneath that. And that's what we're gonna spend next class doing because by then everybody will have their data and so you'll be able to graph it and then analyze it. Okay, yeah? I know you said record the temperature, but is that in one of the data? You know what, I don't think I put that in your flow chart, so let's, you're gonna wanna add that up. Probably I would put it on your, on your data table next to your potato, I put temperature. Okay, so let me bring that up for you. I think I put it in my picture, but I didn't put it on your lab map. I don't think. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so let's go through the lab map. So you, you had your driving question. Hopefully all of you have done your background. Pre-lab, we're gonna do this right now. Then you're gonna set up your pre-lab because we wanna have these tubes sit for about 30 minutes. Okay, your assigned solution. So we're gonna get those going, get them sitting. That'll be the first thing. And then you can work on your potatoes because we, we need to weigh them before and we need to weigh them after, okay? And I'll talk to you one more, I'll about give you a little more talk about that in just a minute. Um, so maybe what you wanna do is put your temperatures um, above each of these when you put the initial mass. That might be a good place to do it. Or below, wherever you have room. Okay, wherever you have room. Yeah, put them above that, that. Okay, and I wanna talk to you about the course share document, because you'll be in that today, the course share document. I know it looks scary, okay? But if we look over here, this is for the potato data. And so you can see period one, group one, you see these three molarities I've assigned for you, 0, 0.4, and 0.8, okay? You're gonna use those same molarities through the whole entire lab, okay? So you'll use those to put in your dialysis tubing. You will use those to put your potato cores in. You're gonna use the same molarities. Group two is 0 0.2, 0 0.6, and one, and so forth, okay? So that's how you know what molarities you're doing. As far as what data needs to be in today, this is the percent change in grams of dialysis tubings for the pre-lab that we're doing today. And so once you've calculated your percent change, you're gonna put it in the correct box. And I've already set it up so it doesn't average for it, okay? So you'll have that right here. And then this will be for your potatoes. So you'll fill this in. Notice I wanna see initial, final percent change because we need to decide if you're any outlier data, okay? And then in here, 
um, this is where you're going to record your data. So make sure this is period one and this is period down below. It's period what? Three. Okay. All right. So let's very quickly do the first part of the lab. Okay, so we, we are on this part right here. Um, so if you've read this through, I'm going to go ahead and change this to a camera so you, I can model this for you. I might need a little assistance um, as we go through this. First thing I want to show you is we're going to be talking about iodine and we're going to be talking about starch. So I want you to see how we can test for some of these different solutions. So this this is just a little meh stop this is a little glucose now i'm going to tell you right now this is glucose solution but in your lab i used uh, sucrose could you please differentiate youngest bio buddy what's the difference between glucose and sucrose Okay, what's the difference between glucose and sucrose? Glucose is a monosaccharide, and sucrose is a disaccharide. So which one is bigger? Sucrose is bigger. So I'm going to tell you right now, it's big enough that it, sucrose cannot cross through the dialysis tubing when you do your part of the lab. Okay, so we're going to find out if glucose can pass through it. So first thing I want to show you is here's a little glucose. I'm going to just put it right here. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit of water. Go grab, you'll see a water syringe right over there in the yellow. Just I didn't bring one over here. Did you find one? Awesome sauce. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in here. Okay, so these are, hopefully I got a good one. These are actually used for your, your analysis. <laughs> okay, anyway, they will test for glucose. So I'm going to take, oh, I'm, this one's, I hope these are good. Okay, so then you can see what it looks like normally. Okay, so I'm going to dip this one right here in the glucose and set it out. Did I even get it in there? And I'm going to dip this one, well, there it is, in the water. Do you see a difference yet? Do you see a difference? Okay, so we're gonna watch that, and then here is here's one that has not been dipped at all. Do you see a difference? Okay, so that's one way you can test to see if, takes like a minute or so, to see if there is glucose or not. Okay, so that's one testing measure right there. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is how you could test to see if starch and iodine have mixed. So here is straight up starch. Okay, and here I put it in number two. Here's straight up iodine. Okay, do you see it? Now I'm gonna put iodine in water. If you remember, this was where the water was. What color does it look? Yeah, copper, orangish, right? Now I'm gonna put it in the starch. Try not to block you. Okay, do you see the difference? So that's how you'll know if um, iodine and starch have mixed. If they mix, iodine will go from that coppery color to a blue color. All right, now look at your glucose test strip. Do you see the difference again? The one on top, this has glucose and this one does not, okay? So now, knowing that, if you recall, what you're supposed to do is take um, some water and put it in a beaker, and that's what I've done. 
And then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a little bit of iodine to it. Boy, that's a lot of water. Iodine, 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 iodine. Okay, and now we're gonna take some dialysis tubing and, oh yeah, I can use this one, I already did. So what I did is I already tied off one end of it. And the way you tie off an end is you twist it like this back and forth on itself and then fold back and then put a piece of string on that. So you usually need help. So I'm gonna need help from you. Grab a piece of string out of that orange bucket. Okay, and I'm gonna put two things in this dialysis tubing. What two things are gonna go inside of it? Right. So this is what you're going to be doing. Those, that, that, um, those dialysis tubings that you soaked, you're going to tie off one end and you're going to put in five mils of the different molarities into the, into the tubes, tie off the other end, rinse them, pat them, and then you're gonna put, um, put them in the solution and let them sit. And then we're gonna wait maybe 30 minutes and pull them back out and see if the, if the mass has changed. So when you go about doing this, I'm gonna put in three mils of starch and I'm gonna put in three mils of glucose. And you have to leave room for expansion, which you're gonna put in how many mils? How many mils are you guys going to be putting in? Five. Five. Okay, good. I can't do this from a distance. Let's see. Did I make it? I did. Okay, so I've put in three mils of starch in there. And now I'm going to put in three mils of glucose. I'm gonna contaminate my syringe because I stuck it in there, so I need to make sure I wash it. Okay, so when you leave room, the way you go about leaving room, it's a little bright, is you go like this, you get all the air out like this, okay, so that there's room to expand, and then you twist like this and fold back, and then I might have my handy dandy lab assistant who's gonna come over here and tie this for me. So make a tie thing first and then you can slide it on. Like, yeah, like almost tied tight. Like, yeah, you're doing awesome. Perfect. Okay, now slide that on there and pull tight. Wait, I'll go in there. Yeah, you got it, you got it. Way to go. Okay, perfect. And then tie it once and then tie it twice. Okay, now what you're gonna be doing is, I am demonstrating glucose and starch, but you're doing something different. You're putting what inside of yours? Sucrose, okay? It's serving a different purpose here. What I'm gonna model for you now is how what you would do with your sucrose though. You want to rinse it off to make sure there's nothing on the outside of it, and then you wanna pat it dry. And the reason is, when you do yours, you're doing a percent change in mass, and those strings are dry. What are those strings gonna do? Soak up the water. So you wanna do a pre-soaking of water on those strings initially, okay, when you're doing yours. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna put yours in distilled water. I'm modeling something else, so I'm putting it in the iodine. Oh, tell me, what color, write this on your lab, what color is this, um, the beaker initially, and what color is the bag initially? What color is the beaker initially, and what color is the bag initially? Bag's clear, okay. And then what color is the beaker? Okay, and is there any glucose in the beaker initially? What did I put inside the beaker? Just what? Water and iodine, so there's no glucose, that would be negative. Is there any glucose in the bag? Yes, yeah, so you could put a plus for glucose in the bag. Okay, now I'm gonna drop that in there and then we'll be able to watch it, okay? so. This is what you're going to do, okay? Well, and I'll just talk to you while we'll, we'll let that kind of sit there a little bit. 
you're going to go to your stations and you're going to need how many pieces of string total? Two for each bag, and how many bags are you doing? Three. How do you know what bag you're doing? On the core share document, right? It has your molarity. Okay? Look what's going on in the beaker. Okay? So um, on your core share document, you can see your molarities, okay? And you're going to be putting five mils in each of your bags, but first you have to do the twist and tie off, right? Put in five mils, twist and tie, five mils, five mils of each of your molarities, twist and tie the other end, rinse and pat, and then put it in your beaker. And then we want to let it sit for how many minutes? 30 minutes, then take it out, rinse, pat, and dry, okay? Um, the second thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to start coring some potatoes. So if you want to divvy up the work and have somebody else coring the potatoes, remember to sit to one side of the potatoes so I have the other half for the other class. Core those potatoes. And now what I want you to get is I want you to get your, um, put 50 milliliters um, in, you have some cups that look this size. Put 50 milliliters of solution in there and then you're going to put your potato cores in there. What should you do onto these plastic things? What should you do? Label them. So I have labeling tape up here, plus I have additional labeling tape right here in this drawer so you can come and grab like a color that you like. It's expensive, so don't just randomly, but come take one. Yes? Plastic wrap, and I'll pull that out. Good. Okay? So you put plastic wrap over the top of them. And look at your, look what's going on in here. So what's happening there? What's, what's happening? Okay, we don't have any evidence yet of water going in there. <laughs> iodine, okay, so where's the iodine going? Into the dialysis tubing. What's your evidence for that? The color change. Is starch coming out of the bag? How do you know starch isn't coming out of the bag? If it did come out of the bag, what color would this solution be out here? Blue. Blue. Is it? No. no. So what is this bag so far? What do we know it's permeable to? It's permeable to iodine. Is it permeable to starch? No. no. And you have evidence for both of that. We don't know about glucose yet, right? We'll test that in just a little bit. A little hint. Glucose comes out. There'll be glucose in that water in just a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to let it sit a little bit longer. So you need to label your beakers, and if you want, you can use, there are 50 mil, I'm trying to think if I have enough of them in here. I might have to use these instead. Yeah, I think I have enough of these. Use these beakers, they're smaller, okay? And so you're gonna put, um, put your potatoes in there, and we probably, you can do 40 mils of solution, just use it on the side. Because that's not gonna be the important part, it's just that they need to be submerged, okay? If your potatoes are bigger and you want to use this, then use these. I'm open to either one, okay? Um, and let's see what else. And then I think that, then that's it, and then we'll get your data going up there. Questions or concerns? Okay. This is all How about it? Okay, so. Um, this is